Although single conversion superhet radios are widespread, there are times when the additional performance advantage of a double and sometimes even a triple conversion superhet radio might be needed. In this video we'll look at what double and triple conversion radios are and the advantages they provide, and we'll also take a look at some of the formats used. Firstly, let's take a look at the basic single conversion superhet. Signals enter the RF stage where they're broadly tuned to remove the image signal. The signals then enter the first mixer along with the local oscillator where they're converted to a fixed frequency intermediate amplifier stage. Here they're amplified and filtered before being passed to a demodulator to reconstitute the baseband signal, which is often audio, and then this is amplified. So let's discover one reason why a double conversion superhead radio might be needed. So the IF frequency, the, the higher the IF frequency, the more separated the image is. So you get uh, more distance from the, the image and that makes it easier to filter that out at the RF. Uh, for a lower IF frequency, you can actually get a tighter uh, channel bandwidth from your filter at the IF and that gives you a better selectivity from adjacent channels and such. One of the key issues of the super hat radio is that of image response. So having a double conversion super hat format enables the first IF to remain high. As the image is removed from the wanted signal by twice the IF, this keeps the wanted signal and image further apart for better filtering. However, having a second lower IF allows for good adjacent channel filtering. The double conversion approach enables a high frequency IF for good image and a low IF for good adjacent channel filtering, and both of these in the same radio. There's another reason for wanting a low frequency IF, whilst also retaining the high frequency IF for good image rejection. Uh, multiple conversion radios are generally uh, designed uh, because there are specific uh, uh, processing requirements uh, for received signals. For example, a very narrow bandwidth might be required for detecting certain types of digital signal, and this uh, the processing for this may only be available at quite a low frequency, so it's necessary to take the intermediate frequency where most of the gain of the radio is and then convert from that frequency down to a lower one at which the digital signal processing that's required can be easily implemented. Another reason for using a double conversion superhet occurred before the advent of frequency synthesizers. Up until then, radio receivers had suffered from drift as the local oscillator was a free-running variable frequency oscillator. Often needing to run at high frequencies and also be switched for different bands, this was far from ideal. Changes in temperature, voltage and the like caused the circuit to drift in frequency, and of course this made using these receivers quite difficult at times. One solution to overcome this problem was to adopt a crystal-controlled first conversion. This gave a much improved level of stability. Using this approach, signals were converted down to a wideband first IF, possibly covering 200 or 500 kilohertz. A second local oscillator would operate at a much lower frequency. As a result, it would offer much better levels of stability. It did result, however, in any receiver only being able to cover its frequency range in a large number of bands. Nowadays, frequency synthesizers are used as local oscillators, and they have really good levels of frequency stability, basically the same as their crystal-controlled reference oscillators, and in fact they hardly drift at all. This means that the crystal-controlled first conversion radios, like the format we've just seen, are not developed these days. Despite this, double and triple conversion superhet radios are still used for high-performance radios, as they can provide many advantages. However, when designing these radios, great care needs to be taken in their design to ensure that the number of spurious responses and signals is minimised. Although we've talked mainly about double conversion radios, sometimes triple superhets are seen. These often convert the signal up in frequency first to gain a very good image performance, and then the signal is converted back down again in stages. For more information about double conversion and multiple conversion superhead radios, check out the links in the description. Also, please subscribe to our channel and like the video as well.